Greetings, esteemed viewers, and welcome to the year 2024. As usual, when I make my presence known on your screens, it is evident that an intriguing matter awaits your attention. Now, to comment, I bring forth news of the suspension of Minister Beta Edu, who presides over the crucial portfolio of humanitarian affairs and disaster management. Now, this decision, of course, has been made by President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, owing to grave allegations surrounding a scandal involving a staggering sum of 585 million naira. Yes, that whooping sum. Now, this was made known to journalists by the special advisor on media and publicity to the president, Adjuri Ingelali, in a statement. Now, on the 7th of January 2024, Tunubu had directed a comprehensive inquiry into the alleged 585 million naira scandal in the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. He had also vowed to decisively punish those involved in any breaches and infractions unraveled during the investigations. Now, speaking of the 585 million naira payment allegation, Minister Beta Edo had claimed that the payment was meant for vulnerable groups in acquiring from Cross River, Ogo, and Lagos State, describing the allegations against her as baseless. Now, I'm just going to stop there. Imagine starting 2024 like this. <laughs> Nevertheless, in my opinion, the allegations could be rendered unfounded if she were to present the evidence, and this is me specifically referring to her commitment to transparency. Now, actions they say carry more weight than mere words. We are discussing a substantial sum of money here, a staggering 585 million naira, which cannot simply be disregarded or concealed if you ask me. Moving on, we are met with yet another mind-boggling story, which is the Federal Capital Territory High Court in Abuja, declaring the prolonged detention of former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, without trial, as a flagrant violation of his fundamental human rights. Now, the court also slammed a hundred million naira fine against the federal government and the Economic Financial Crimes Commission. Delivering the judgment on the 8th of January 2024, the presiding judge, Oluka also restrained the federal government and its agents from rearresting or detaining the MFLA without an order of the court. The judgment was given in a fundamental human rights suit filed by the former CBN governor following his prolonged detention in the custody of the Department of State Services. He asked the court to order the respondents to pay him 1 billion naira damages and to restrain them from further arresting and or detaining him. During his ruling, Adeni said quite a lot, and one of which is that the practice of arresting suspects before investigation by security agencies must stop. Now, in his words, time has come to put an end to the unwholesome culture and practices of arresting and keeping a suspect in detention before the investigation of the suspect alleged of an offence. A suspect must be allowed to have his day in court if indeed there is evidence of a commission of the crime against him. Now guys, it is imperative to remember that the former Central Bank of Nigeria chief was apprehended on June 10, 2023, shortly after being suspended by President Bola Tinumbu. Now, during the process of his arrest, Numerous allegations such as terrorism financing, money laundering, and other economic crimes have emerged. Consequently, it is essential to deliberate upon this recent development. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. As we bring this episode to a close, <laughs> my guys, let's quickly talk about something that has been making quite the buzz on the internet lately and that is none other than the allegations of sexual assault physical abuse fake miracles and trauma allegedly suffered by people in the hands of a late nigerian pastor temi Tokpa joshua also known as tb joshua this of course we all know was brought to light via a bbc investigation according to the bbc it conducted a two-year investigation in collaboration with an international media platform open democracy which involved more than 15 bbc journalists across three continents now the report stated that former insiders estimated that joshua made tens of millions of dollars from pilgrims and other money streams 
fundraising, video sales, and stadium appearances abroad. Now, the investigation centered around allegations of sexual assault, physical abuse, solitary confinement, and fake miracles, amongst other things. Now, one of the victims who was part of the disciples, a Nigerian simply identified as Bisola, stated that she was raped multiple times by the late clergyman. Bisola, who spent 14 years inside the compound, added that she was asked to recruit virgin girls into the disciple fold under threats of violence. Bisola told the BBC that courting Westerners was a key tactic employed by Joshua. In other words, he used the white people to market his brand. Now, in fact, there is a lot where this came from and it is quite depressing as it is disturbing. You know, as a Christian, it deeply worries me to witness the immense burden that people place upon themselves in the name of religion. It is truly terrifying to see how some individuals